Linux Mint has always been one of my favorite distributions. After all, my very first book was written about it, so it holds a special place in my heart, even if I don't use it as my daily driver. Even though I don't use it on a day-to-day -day basis, I always love to keep up to date with what the Mint developers are up to because, let's face it, they always have some interesting and exciting features to give us in each release. So naturally, when Linux Mint 19.2, codenamed Tina, was released, I just had to check it out. And obviously, the codename Tina is a Final Fantasy VI reference. Tina is the name of one of the characters in Japan, was named Terra here in the United States. So the only thing I can think of here is that the Mint developers are obviously Final Fantasy VI fans. Nothing else makes sense. In all seriousness, though, in this review, I'm going to focus solely on the new features of 19.2 because I've already reviewed 19.1, and there's not a lot different, but there are some notable features that they have added to this release that I would like to talk about, which will form the basis of this review. Before we get into the new features, though, just a couple quick notes. First of all, I just want to talk about the polish. I've already covered this in previous reviews, but um, just as an aside, the polish in Linux Mint 19.2 continues to be great. You could tell that they've added a touch of polish to pretty much every aspect of the desktop. Even the splash screen when you encrypt your hard disk will have the Mint logo, whereas some distributions will just have a, sm a small little text box that you may or may not be able to see. The login screen, the default theme, the wallpaper, there's pretty much no aspect of the desktop that they didn't touch with some sort of polish, and that definitely continues here in this release. Now in terms of the installation, you can check out any of my previous Mint installation videos. The process has not changed here. It's pretty much exactly the same. So I'm not going to show off the installation process this time around. But again, I have videos on my channel already that outline the process. I have one for installing Linux Mint as the only operating system on your computer, as well as a video for how to dual boot Linux Mint with Windows. And those procedures will remain the same. The installation process is very fast. And if, again, if you've seen my other videos, you know exactly what to expect. You just boot from the flash drive, then you click on the Linux Mint install icon, and then you go through the various screens to fill out the information to customize your installation, and then you reboot and you're good to go. So another feature that I would like to talk about very quickly is the fact that the boot repair utility is included in the installation media. This utility is not specific to Linux Mint, but if you boot from the Linux Mint flash drive, then you'll see this option in the menu. What this allows you to do is repair your boot. And why this is important is because if you dual boot with Windows, it's always the case every now and again that Windows will have an update and it'll overwrite your boot sector, and then you no longer have an option to boot into Linux Mint. So including the boot repair utility in the installation media was absolutely brilliant. I don't know why anyone else hasn't thought of that already. So if ever you find yourself in that situation, you just grab your Linux Mint flash drive, you boot from it, run the boot repair utility, and then you should have your Windows and Linux Mint options at boot just like you did before. So I think that's really awesome that they decided to include that. So with those quick notes out of the way, let's go ahead and check out the release. So here I am on the Linux Mint desktop. This is a fresh installation that I did for this video. This is run on a System76 Lemur. My tried and true machine has been going strong for about three years. And just like before, you get a welcome screen that gives you a few things here to get you started. For example, there's documentation. You can get quick links to create system snapshots, driver manager, update manager, and so on. So it's pretty helpful that you have this appear at the very beginning to give you a chance to explore the release. But for the most part, you know, it's pretty much the same as it was in the previous release. So I'm not going to go over this in too much detail. Go ahead and close that. So the default look and feel hasn't changed a whole lot in this release. This is a point release after all. But to show you, I'll just go ahead and bring up the file manager here. This is Nemo, a really great file manager. And you can see that we have the same default theme here. It's using the Mint Y theme just like before, and I really like this theme quite a bit. It's, I'm probably biased because green is my favorite color, and there's no shortage of green here. So this is one of those distributions where I might not actually change the default theme if I was to use this as my daily driver. I might enable the dark theme, but you know I actually do like the theme as it is by default. And of course, changing your theme is very easy. You just go over here to System Settings. Click on themes, 
And then for example, if I wanted to change to a dark theme, I could easily do that by selecting Mint Y Dark or one of the many options here. And I know I've gone over this in a previous video, but I just want to highlight again that the fact that they include so many themes here is amazing. Very few distributions actually give you this amount of customization by default without having to install additional theme packages. So I think that's awesome that regardless of what your favorite color is, you could probably find a theme that appeals to you without having to install anything extra. I really wish more distributions would do this. So I'll just go ahead and change the theme back to the default and go ahead and close this. Now another feature that I think is awesome is right here in Nemo. And since I have it open, I'll go ahead and show you. But now you can actually pin folders and files. So I'll go ahead and show you. So basically all you have to do is right click a folder or a file, and then you can click on pin. And then you'll see immediately what it did. It bolded the name of the folder, or if it was a file, it would bold that name as well. And then it put it up here at the top. So this is a little bit more apparent if I go here to list view and you can see that documents is pinned up here at the top. So I'll go ahead and unpin that. If I wanted to pin videos, then that'll put it right up there up at the top. So I have quick access to that folder. I'll create a file. I'll just call it test. And then I'll go ahead and pin it so you can see what that looks like. Now I think that's very awesome. And as great as that is though, I do kind of wish that the pinned files and folders would be in a separate section so that when you change to a different folder that they would follow you, which would be even better to have a list of your frequented folders and files in one place. But it's still a welcome feature that I'm glad to see here. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but before we do, I just wanted to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers. Setting up your Linux cloud servers or Linodes is quick and easy with their intuitive cloud manager interface. There are multiple instance types available to make any app or service flexible and scalable. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Use your Linode server to host a website, set up a VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. You can set up your Linodes in a data center nearest you with their latest opening in Mumbai in July 2019. If you need assistance, 24-7, 365, friendly support is available by phone or support ticket. Visit the URL on the screen right now to get started with $20 in credit you can use towards setting up your very own Linode. There are Linux instance types available for as low as $5 a month. So let's go ahead and get back to the video. So another thing I thought was pretty awesome about this release is that it automatically set up my printer. You can see the printer icon down here, and if I click on it, it already has my brother printer set up, which has been notoriously hard for me to set up in Linux. When I set this up in Ubuntu, for example, it usually takes a few tries before I get it working. But here in Linux Mint, it's here by default. I did not have to do anything. All I did was simply join my laptop to my Wi-Fi network. It found my printer and it went ahead and added it. So that is just awesome. There's also been a lot of updates to the update manager, which you see is this icon right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And of course, since this is a brand new install, it's recommending that I set up system snapshots. Which I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I've already gone over it. But basically, if you're a Windows user, think of this as pretty much like a system restore. It allows you to set up snapshots that you can restore your system to if ever you run into a problem. So it's recommended that you set this up before you start installing updates just in case a bad update comes in that's not compatible with your hardware and you know makes something not work correctly. It's very rare that something like that was to happen, but it doesn't hurt anything other than take up some additional disk space to have system snapshots. So I'll click OK. And then I'll put in my super secret password. And it automatically brought up the time shift utility. This is the setup wizard, which comes up because I've never set up snapshots on this install before. And you just simply choose our sync. And again, I'm not going to go over this in too much detail, but we're just creating the initial snapshot now. And then I'll select this disk right here because it has more space. Next, I'll accept all of the defaults. Next. Next again. And then finish. Now that time shift is set up, I can click on the create button here. And it's already creating a snapshot for me, so it's very easy. And as you saw, we basically have a lot of options 
that we can use to customize how frequently this is done. So it's a great utility to have, and I'm glad to see that here in Linux Mint. Again, this is not the first time that this utility was present in Linux Mint, but it's one of those features that I think sets it apart from others. All right, so now that that's set up, I can go ahead and close it. And I'm back here at the Update Manager. And before we install any updates, there's a prerequisite update. It always wants the Update Manager itself to be up to date before we can install others. So I'll just go ahead and apply it. And here we go. We have a list of updates. It's not been that long since Mint was released, but we already have a handful of updates. So basically, before I show you the new features of the Update Manager, I'll just go ahead and install these. Click OK. Password yet again. So it's always good to have the latest updates. Nothing much has changed in this regard of the Update Manager, but I'll be showing you the new features of this in just a moment. All right, so now that we're up to date, I'm gonna go ahead and give my laptop a reboot. I'll be right back. And we're back, so I'll close this and bring up the Update Manager again. And let's check out the new features. So there's actually quite a few new features here in the Update Manager, so I apologize in advance if I miss anything, but they did do quite a lot of work here. So if I go up here to Edit and then Preferences, so you see that Auto Refresh is configurable now. You can basically change how frequent this happens. And what this is, is a background process that updates the package cache from the repositories to make sure that your system knows about the latest packages. So you can go ahead and configure that here. And then what I also think is cool is over here in automation, you can configure automatic updates. So I'll go ahead and turn that on. And then you can also enable automatic maintenance. So I'll turn that on as well. And what that does is it removes obsolete kernels and dependencies. So basically, when you install newer versions of kernels, you'll also have the older versions as well. So if you have a problem with the newer kernel, then you could just boot into the previous one. But if you don't prune that list, eventually you could have 20 something or more kernels after some time. So what this will do is make sure that you always have at least one older kernel, but then it'll automatically remove the others. So it basically makes it clean itself when you do updates. So that's pretty cool. Speaking of kernels, I'll go ahead and close this. If you go up here to view and you go to Linux kernels, you can basically install a different kernel other than the one that it comes with by default. So you get this little warning message, which basically lets you know that what you're doing might you know, potentially have some problems if you're not careful, although personally I've never had an issue. But moving on from there, we can see that we have different kernels available for us to install. So you might be wondering why this matters. So Linux Mint is based on the LTS Ubuntu release, which as of the time I'm recording this video, is getting about a year and a half older. It's actually just close to being a year and a half old. So there's new features in the Linux kernels that you may or may not be taking advantage of in Ubuntu LTS or anything that's based on it. And what this does is it gives you an option to install a newer kernel to ensure that you could take advantage of those new features. One example of why this might matter is kernel 5.0. That actually features AMD FreeSync support. So if you are playing Steam games, then you probably want this because a lot of displays actually feature this. So if you have a compatible video card, then this would allow you to take advantage of that. But if you're using an older kernel, you wouldn't be able to. Another new aspect of the update manager here in the kernel section is it actually tells you how long the kernel is supported for. So you can factor that into your decision for which kernel that you actually want to have on your system. And you can see the same thing if I go to 4.18. This version right up here at the top is supported until August, which actually is this month. And then you have the LTS kernel, I believe this is, supported until April of 2023. So if security support is important to you, then you'll definitely want to take that into consideration. I showed you how to automatically remove kernels, but 
You can basically manually remove them as well by clicking on this button, Remove Kernels, here at the bottom. And you can see here that I do have a candidate for removal. If you remember, I did install my updates, so this is the previous kernel. This is the one that shipped with Linux Mint. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it. I'll put in my super secret password yet again. And there we go. So there's quite a bit of work done in Update Manager, and it's very user friendly. And it might even be the best update manager that any distribution has, as far as I know. It's just so intuitive and easy to use. And one of my favorite features of Linux Mint has always been the Cinnamon desktop itself. And while Cinnamon is available in other distributions, it has the best implementation in Linux Mint of any other distro. And we have Cinnamon 4.2, the latest version in this release of Linux Mint. So it's always great to get an update for Linux Mint. So you always get the latest version of Cinnamon as well. And the developers are estimating that there should be some performance improvement here. Now, I think the desktop itself is pretty fast, but I'm not sure if I actually notice any performance improvement because I never really had a problem with the performance of Cinnamon in the past. It's always been great for me. So I'm not quite noticing a difference yet, but I do think it's great that the developers are focused on improving performance and they even mentioned that it's supposed to take up less RAM as well. So that's just awesome. In addition, there's a lot of smaller improvements in Linux Mint as well. If you take a look at the release notes, you can see that there's actually quite a bit of changes. Some of them small, some of them large. I've gone over some of the bigger changes. But all these smaller improvements basically make the overall experience that much better. There might not be very many features that stand out for everyone. For example, there's improvements with how flat packs are shown in the application menu. That only really applies if you use flat pack, but if you do, then you'll have a better experience. And we even have menu improvements here, like you're seeing that it basically um, is able to differentiate if you have more than one of a specific type of application installed. You can actually customize your scroll bars more. I already mentioned the pinning files. There's improvements with sharing files, and there's just overall a very long list of improvements here. So it's definitely worthy for you to upgrade to, and if you haven't checked out Linux Mint, now might be a great time to do that. So there you go. That was my review of Linux Mint 19.2. I know this review was a little bit shorter than most because again, I wanted to focus more on the newer features because I've already covered previous Linux Mint 19 releases in previous reviews. So I've already covered quite a bit of what makes Linux Mint great. So again, if you haven't already checked out Linux Mint, now would be a great time. I covered the Cinnamon edition in this video. There's also a Mate and XFCE edition available as well. If you have older hardware that might not be up to the task of running a modern desktop like Cinnamon, but I highly recommend that you check it out. It's very fast and stable for me. There's a lot of options. It's great for beginners, also great for advanced users because it's able to scale and you have a lot of features to take advantage of. So go ahead and check it out and let me know in the comments below what you think of Linux Mint 19.2. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.